What is going on, Jeff fans? Preseason is officially in the books. Snoopy Trophy uh, going to the New York Jets in this one. Uh, quick recap. Obviously, have not watched, rewatched the game yet, so this is pretty off the cuff. Um, just instant uh, initial takeaways from the game. Number one, Rodgers is a Jet man. It's just still seeing him out there in a Jet uniform. It still feels surreal. Um, heart skipped a beat when he's rolling out, diving, throwing it away. We Wink Martindale with a cover zero in the preseason is certainly a choice. Um, but yeah, you, you saw the effortless throwing motion, how quick he makes decisions, and then just on a dime to Garrett Wilson. And that's my second takeaway. Look, the it's not just that Garrett Wilson is going to be a number one wide receiver. It, he's he's that guy. Like I'm talking 1,500 yards and 12 touchdowns is not out of the question. The way Rodgers just fed um, relentlessly Devontae Adams, Garrett Wilson is going to get that target share. He's that guy. Uh, best receiver we've drafted since I've been alive. Confirmed. Now, uh, Jets offensive line, again, just kind of speaking out of my behind here, to be honest, I haven't been able to rewatch the game at all but initially i looked like a lot of the pressure was just because of the extra blitzing and there was a struggle with blitz pickup from a running back um but i thought becton looked really good i was trying to hone in on him and i thought becton was really really solid um now the wide receiver room was really interesting okay number one cobb goes out there and he's with the starting offense does that mean that he's going to be permanently ahead of or Miko Harmon or whatever, not necessarily, but it, I think it makes sense. And I think when I watched Randall Cobb's film and I watched Miko Harmon's film, like, I, you know, route running Cobb hands Cobb, you know, those two things matter, uh, especially to Aaron Rodgers being in the precise spot and catching the ball and with Hardman. It looked like he hurt his finger. You saw the good and the bad. You saw the quick yak intended throw, how explosive and shifty he was. And then, yeah, I, I know it's like, <laughs> A lot of people say, oh, you're a hater on Hardman. I'm like, guys, I watched 14 games. I'm just telling you what to expect, okay? So I think eventually you'll learn to appreciate that I'm watching these guys play a ton, and I'm just telling you what I see, and I'm not being a homer. And sometimes it's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows, what I say, but you're getting at least what I believe to be the truth. Um, and it's backed with a lot of, a lot of film watching. That's, that's Miko Harmon. He has no catch radius. Now, Erickson, that was crazy. Uh, two touchdowns from this guy, this, uh, Chris Hogan kind of fella. Now Erickson, believe it or not, he's only a couple of years removed from like a 700 yard season out of the slot. And he's been a kick returner, partner returner. Uh, I don't know, man, this wide receiver room, if they don't add somebody, uh, which we'll talk about in a second is pretty open. And how about Gibson? Okay. So with the ball in his hands, he is dynamite. He is electric. Um, but he had a drop. He had another catch that you would have liked him to bring in. And then he's kind of had the muffed punts earlier. So man, it's, it's, it's like him and Brownlee Gibson does so way more positive and way more negative than Brownlee when Brownlee doesn't kind of just doesn't really do much, uh, at all. If Gibson's been dropping the ball and muffing punts at that clip that we've seen in the preseason and practice, that's probably too risky, but He's got some juice with the ball in his hands, man. I, I, li I like the way that kid plays as an undrafted free agent. Brownlee had a couple nice catches. There was one play where um, I'm excited to rewatch it where uh, he laid a really good block and just eliminated the corner off the screen and finished him to the ground. You could tell this kid plays physical uh, and plays tough. I just don't see him separating, man. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing that's been for me is uh, tough to win in this league if you're that slow in and out of your breaks. With Brownlee, but overall, I think the roster bubble receivers had a very um, strong showing. I still think they got to bring somebody in here, especially with uh, Hardman maybe having an injury a couple weeks away from the season. The bottom of the wide receiver room just isn't good enough, and that's no big deal because we have 20 million in our pocket, and a bunch of guys are about to get cut in the next 72 hours. Um, so bring somebody in, or you know, send a day three pick for somebody. No big deal. Running back um, looks like Michael Carter is going to be that guy, and that's fine. I think he's a better player than than Bam, but. My biggest question is, you know, you saw the huge discrepancy between Bam's ability to pass block and Michael Carter's. The first play where Rodgers is running for his life, um, it's just because the the Giants sell out and it's just they're six on six across the board. Okay. Now Michael Carter has to pick up the linebacker or Simmons. Michael Carter is one of the worst pass protecting backs in the NFL. So I don't know. Uh, with the explosiveness that Hall and Cook are going to give you and Izzy speed, even though Bam isn't as 
good of a running back as Michael Carter. I think his skill set, his bigger body, his pass protecting, um, his ability to get pick up short yardage might be a better fit to round out the running back room, to be honest. But it looks like he's just not going to be on the team. Koontz, tight ends. Hey, we're going to use tight ends. How about that? A little play action, naked boot. You hit your tight end in the flat, gain seven yards. Mike LaFleur is crying somewhere. Uh, I, I feel like Koontz, when I rewatch it, is going to have a a similar showing to the Hall of Fame game where it was a, a sneaky good game on his blocking. I saw him uh, ask to wham a couple times, and he did okay. Zach, Zach Wilson, best game of the preseason, I think. Now, uh, I think this is the first game where you saw him actually ha- make like big boy throws that you'd have to make um, in the regular season. Previously, he's just been taking what the defense gives him. That's fine. What? Why else would you make it harder for yourself? But you saw some big time throws, and his receivers did not do him any favors. I saw at least three drops and a couple other passes that you would have liked uh, to have been caught. So, yeah, there was one drive where his ball placement was kind of shaky, and I put it out on Twitter. And then after that, he just crushed it. So, awesome job by Zach. Tim Boyle was absolutely fine for a third string quarterback. So, offensively, it was humming pretty good. The defensively. Pass rush is still crazy. The Jets have been obliterating the offensive lines of every single team they faced, and Carl Lawson and Quinn Williams haven't even really done much of it at all. They're two leading sack guys from last year. Desna Alexandre, undrafted free agent from Pitt, and Pita Tawama Panoa um, from the USFL. If Lawson does start on the four week IR, those are the two names to watch for uh, that 10th defensive line spot. Linebacker, I thought Chaz Surratt was the best linebacker on the field from what I could see. If he if they keep a fifth linebacker, I think it's got to be Chaz. He also made a nice play on special teams. Zaire Barnes, he's close. You know, there's a few plays where he's just not quite there, but he's fast. Um, when it clicks for him, I think we got a good one in Zaire. I do. He's my he's my favorite day three pick for the Jets. I like him better than Carter Warren. I like him better than Jared Bernard Converse. I like him better than Zach Kuntz. I like him better than Izzy Abanacanda. I know. I will take my prison sentence. A couple years from now, Zaire Barnes will be playing a bigger role on this team than Izzy Abanacanda. You heard it here first. Now, uh, secondary, Trey Dean, a couple plays early, uh, nice tackles, got exposed in a pretty brutal coverage rep. I was like, no, Trey. Um, but then he came, went out of the game. I don't know if he was injured. I'm going to take it as like he's on the 53, and they were just putting him on ice. Uh, so not sure. Hopefully he's okay. The corners, Brandon Eccles, uh, kind of had a spotty preseason with all the penalties, but yeah, pick six, love it. Um he got slot reps with the second team. So that's significant. Maybe he would be their primary backup outside and slot corner with Gidry down. And he had a nice quarterback hit on a blitz from the slot as well. Craig James, the nice game. Uh, he's more of a potential guy who could push Justin Hardy. I don't know if they would consider that. And then Bryce Hall is just bad. Uh, Bryce Hall. I just don't see how you pay him 3 million to be. I don't get it. Like he was decent at one point. Did I, did I make that up? Was he not decent? A couple years ago, I don't know, man. He's just been brutal the last two preseasons. So uh, there it is. Quick notes on the game. Uh, definitely do a much more in-depth recap of the entire preseason once I go back and rewatch this one and make some more notes and all that. But just wanted to get this one out there. Um, thanks for hanging out, and we'll talk all soon.